This impressively stashed cabinet belongs to one of the modern day icons of the racing world. Obviously a big influence of the TT inside here. He is today everything but bikes. He is of course Charlie Williams. Charlie, fantastic racing career, about 15 years was it? That's yeah, about? just about. Yeah, yeah. Obviously uh, a successful one, you must have some amazing memories of that time. Yeah, um, a long career and a long time ago and it's difficult to remember there are lots of special moments, just which were the most special ones is, is pretty difficult. But probably my first TT, which was 1972, my first TT proper when I did six races um, and finished in the top six in five of those races, which was pretty impressive at the time. And you started off on 250 Yamahas, was it? And then you progressed onto the Hondas. Take us through that period. Well, I started with the Yamaha 250 um, with a friend of mine, a, a local guy by the name of Alan Steele, who was responsible for me starting racing, really, and he was a big influence to him, uh, for me in the years I was racing. But then I went to race for Honda, and that was to do with Bill Smith. Yes. Bill couldn't race a particular race for Honda. I'd won, I'd won my first team. Hey, you're being polite though. He fell out with them. No change there. Though. That was very, very diplomatic, but that was no, true. No, he well, did fall out but, with but them. This, this wasn't the reason. I mean, he'd fallen out with Honda a long time after that at this right. time. He, yeah. was, he, was, he was very much um, with Honda. And John Williams and, and uh, Bill were supposed to be racing in uh, a race in Belgium. And John, uh, Bill crashed in Ireland, I think it was, somewhere and injured himself. So Honda said to, to, to John, look, can you sort of um, recommend the replacement? So he said, yeah, Charlie Williams. I'd beaten John at the TT. I'd won my first TT that year and beaten John. We'd had a quite a good scrap in the 250 race. So we went off to Belgium and we won. I mean, obviously racing, riding is, uh, and racing has changed quite dramatically over the, you know, the course of the years. Do you think that's for the better or...? I think uh, it's got a lot safer. Do you? And that's definitely for the better. Oh yeah, circuits are so much safer now. Equipment's better. Yeah. Um, there were too many people getting killed when I was racing, and probably more before that. Now obviously the TT is a favourite of yours, but do you have any particular preference of road racing or circuits? I very much like road circuits. Oh. I, I, lo I love the TT and still do. I, yeah. you know, I, I will not say anything bad about the TT. Sometimes I've thought about it long and hard. Again, I've lost a lot of friends at the TT. Um, but to actually race around the TT circuit is such a thrill and even last week I did a, a, an interview with Agostini and wow, even yeah. he said that even yeah. he after all these years he turned his back on the TT in 1972 because um, his friend was killed there but he still says that it's the most exciting race he's ever done in his life you know That's so that bears testament for the TT. What are your kind of memories of racing against the likes of Agostini? Well that, with Agostini um, my first Grand Prix was in Aston in 1974 and I finished fifth uh, a race that Agostini won but my first recollection of Agostini was 71 when I was riding a production bike at the TT and he passed me coming off the mountain uh, during an early morning practice. Totally unexpectedly, the, the bike I was riding was so quiet, the 500 MV, four, four exhaust pipes, open <laughs> exhaust pipes. Blew you away. <laughs> oh, I, I, almost, I almost jumped over the, over the hedge flare. The old tick is going yeah, a little bit there, really, wasn't it? <laughs> I was only a young kid and, and I, I mean, I, I was quite pleased the fact it was Agostini, you know, oh, so I go with yeah. but, but it was, oh, it was tremendous, tremendous, yeah. And he was a brilliant rider. Absolutely, it goes without saying. Now, if we kind of move a little bit backwards, how did you start in racing? Because it wasn't a right. kind of family thing or no, anything. not like, at what, all. What, what kind of enticed you and... Well, inspired you to get into it. We're in my house in Kelsall now and next door was the house where I was born and my father um, wasn't interested in motorcycles at all, he was a football fanatic. Alton Park's five miles up the road. I used to go and watch racing in Alton Park and you know something, sometimes you get something in your mind and you just want to do it and I just wanted to go uh, motorbike racing. There was, there was nothing, I was going to go motorbike racing and I knew I was. I don't know, didn't know that how the heck I was going to do it at the time but I was going to do it and I did it. Obviously it's a passion that stayed with you and progressed into uh, retail for, for so many of your kind of generation it seems to be a natural progression doesn't it yeah i think when you've made a bit of a name for yourself in in, in whether it, whatever sport it might be or whatever field it might be and it makes sense really to use yeah. that name and so it, that's when it's I never been it. a case of hanging out your boots and just <laughs> kind of leaving the whole thing i don't think i know what else to do to be honest i've got other interests but i don't think i'd, I'd know exactly how to make a living if it wasn't something to do with motorbikes um, they have been in my, in, my, in my blood really ever since those early days at Alton Park going watching um, the likes of Derek Minter and John Cooper and people like that. And you know. Well, Charlie, thank you very much indeed for your time. It's thank a pleasure. You. Thank you.